Welcome back to Exchange Server 2016. And now we're going to look at how do we manage mailbox permissions. In this module, we want to talk about mailbox permissions. Sometimes you want to give permissions to another user in a mailbox. This could be because of a delegate scenario or it could be because you need to manage a shared mailbox or something like that. So that's one scenario, manage mailboxes. And then sometimes you want to manage specific folders inside of Exchange. So you want to give uh, like an admin access to the calendar of an exec so that the admin can manage his or her calendar. So that, that's another scenario. And so uh, mailbox permissions is one of those things that can help people to be more collaborative and uh, work around a mailbox. So there's um, certain types of permissions that you can grant to users and uh, we're going to go into those, mostly show you how that works. Uh, how do you assign permissions to those mailboxes? Uh, because you need to assign uh, different types of permissions. So really it boils down to these two things. You have send as permissions and you have send on behalf of permissions. And the difference between those two is, is when you set up a send as permission, you are sending as that person. So when you have permission in somebody else's mailbox and you say send as, you can add another reply to address almost to your message as it goes out. And if you have send as permission, it will go out as that user that you're sending as. If you have send on behalf of permissions, then it will go with two, both email addresses. So it will show you your email address as well as the, the mailbox you're sending on behalf of mailbox. So, and that way you have sort of a order trail. You know that, um, say you're doing this for shared mailbox or, or for some another user's mailbox and the admin is sending a meeting invite to the organization, but the admin is sending this on behalf of the exec mailbox then it will say that admin on behalf of the exec. So people know that this wasn't really the important exec that sent out this mail. It came from the admin. So you've, you've got both email addresses. But if you give the admin send as permissions, then it will look like the exec sent the mailbox. So that is um, the one side of permissions. The other side of permissions is uh, full access permissions. So this is where you grant users full access to a whole mailbox so that somebody else can open up that mailbox and then maybe you see all those mailboxes in uh, Outlook as different, it almost looks like a different data uh, folder or different repository inside of Outlook. And so if you have full access, then you have the ability to see those and you can quickly switch to that context to see those mailboxes. But, you know, enough talking. Let's, let's see how this works in, in, in practice. Okay, Martin, I've got, uh, I'm signed in again to the Exchange Admin Center as an admin, Exchange Admin. Uh, permissions can be assigned to any type of mailbox, whether it's a shared mailbox, a linked mailbox, uh, resource mailboxes, any recipient object you could apply, you know, these mailbox permissions to. The ones you mentioned, the send as, send on behalf, and full access. Uh, you can manage those uh, in the Exchange Admin Center or the Exchange Management Shell, uh, but you do have to have a certain amount of, you know, permissions yourself to be able to do that. So you need to be a member of the organization management role group okay. uh, in order to manage those recipient objects. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's take a look at how you do it in the UI. Uh, I've already created a couple different user objects. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So the first thing you would enter is a user alias. So in keeping with the uh, theme, I'm just going to uh, alias this one as user 03. And this is going to be a new user. With the first name, I'm being very original here, Martin. Yeah. User three. And I want to put this person in the user containers. Oops. And I'll use the same, uh, for the logon name, I'll use the same thing. Uh, user 
as the alias user03. And password is password. Again, I'm being very original here. <laughs> um, just to show you what other options are, you, you can uh, select when you create uh, new user objects, you can select the mail uh, box database that you want that user to be homed on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> of course, you can toggle the require password change on next logon setting. Uh, so if you don't specify a database, it's going to randomly choose one. It's going to randomly choose one. And I think it's best practice to have some sort of methodology in your d databases. Do you, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so in some organizations, when you uh, create a mailbox, you can uh, say, oh, this database is for these users. So maybe you have a different SLA. So this database is part of a database availability group, so it's replicated all over the world because it's a really important user. I really don't want to lose them. So you have a dedicated database for that. Or you may have another database that says, uh, this is all the users from this surname to that surname, or database associated with a specific location. So there's a lot of reasons why you may want to split them up according to some criteria. Uh, but one of the things that works really nice in this case is if it's random then you don't give preference to anybody it's just randomly chosen for you and then it ends up quite balanced because at the end of the day every user that you create just randomly is assigned to one of the databases and it's balanced across all your databases and they grow the same and so on yeah all right that makes sense but i digress let's talk about permissions okay so uh, let, let's say i've got this exchange admin account mm -hmm. And I want to assign a user send as permissions so that that person, if I'm busy, you know, go ahead and sign into my mailbox and respond to the mail from Martin. Okay. It's, so uh, I would bring up the, uh, uh, the properties of, say, the Exchange Admin account. And navigate to the mailbox delega delegation. Mm-hmm. And this is where you find where I can assign send as permissions to this mailbox, uh, the send on behalf permissions, and full access. Okay. So in this instance, I'm going to select user one. And user one now has send as access to the mailbox of the Exchange admin. Okay. Very simple. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that you can manage permissions in the uh, Exchange Admin Console or the Exchange Management Shell, and obviously if you were doing this for multiple users, you'd want to use the shell. Okay. Uh, there are some different uh, commandlets, though, that you would use to assign these permissions depending on whether or not you're in an on-premises environment or Exchange Online. So, for instance, in on-premises, uh, if you wanted to assign the send as permissions, you would need to use uh, add AD permission commandlet. Mm -hmm. um, in Exchange Online, you use add recipi dash recipient permission commandlet. Oh, okay. Yes, so the, the different commandlets, and then likewise, there are different um, attributes that you use to assign uh, user two to be a delegate of user one. Okay, yeah, so there's a, a slight difference between the two. Uh, so if you exchange online, you need to be aware of those features that is an exchange online, how that works, and so it's not directly translatable to on-prem. Correct, correct. Okay. And then the send on behalf, uh, that, that relies on the set-mailbox set commandlet. Okay. Uh, there's an attribute called grant send on behalf mm. um, that you use to, you know, you either set it to true or to false okay. uh, to assign send on behalf. Okay, well, that sounds easy. <laughs> <laughs> Over okay. you, Martin. Yeah, so mailbox permissions um, really needed in that scenarios where you want to give somebody mailbox uh, permissions uh, that's in one mailbox to another mailbox. Another thing that you may want to do is you want to also give people access to folders inside of your mailbox. So when you give somebody access, for example, to your calendar or to the, your inbox, or maybe you're going to create a specific folder inside of your mailbox and you only want to give somebody access to that folder, you can do that in exchange as well. Um, one way that you can do it is 
through uh, Outlook. You can go into Outlook and you can click on uh, the properties of that folder in Outlook and you can give somebody permissions, somebody else permissions to those folders. But uh, if you want to do this as an administrator, you can also do it as an administrator and use the mailbox folder commandlets to give people access to folders inside of your mailbox as well. The important thing to note here is, is when you give somebody access to a folder inside of Exchange or your mailbox, you have to specify this access right um, parameter and that gives you uh, flexibility in what access are you going to give this user for this folder. Uh, and there's various levels. You can give somebody full access rights, which then gives them the ability to do everything inside of that folder. But maybe you only want to give them access to read that folder. Uh, in some organizations, uh, they have an open policy and they give everybody in the organization rights to see all calendar information in the calendar, like where's the meeting, the location, all of that information. So you give people read access to your folder, but not just free busy information. They can see the details. The details. Um, but uh, in some organizations, you want to go one step further and you want to give them contribute access. So you become a contributor to that folder, which means that you can create items in there and manage the items that you created, but you cannot delete items that you didn't create. So only the items that you created yourself you will be able to assign that. So the access rights parameter allows you to specify that level that you want to delegate to. And, and if you only want to give people access, read access, you can do that, or contributor access, or you can give people full access so they can do everything they want. But as a user, don't I have that ability also just using Outlook? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I visualize uh, how you have like editor, contributor, things yes. like that. Uh, is that it, not the same thing? That is exactly the same thing. So when you go into Outlook and you click on the properties of that folder in Outlook, you can give people access um, directly as an Outlook user. But in organizations where you want the administrator to set that up, you would use the exchange management shell to run those commandlets and allow users to do that. Uh, but uh, Or do that yourself so that it's again documented. But if you're a user and you want to just do this ad hoc yourself, then you would go into Outlook and you would give people contributor, editor, and so on access so that they have those permissions. And then you specify who do you want to give those permissions to. Okay. There's no, so in terms of the UI, the UI is really Outlook, where you do it yourself. The user sort of self manage uh, giving permissions. And from an exchange point of view, it's exchange management shell. So you can't give those granular permissions on a folder level inside of the Exchange Admin Center. So the web browser interface, it's only available in PowerShell. So in PowerShell, you use the uh, mailbox uh, folder permission commandlets to delegate that access to specific folders in mailboxes. So um, that wraps up our module on Exchange Mailbox Permissions. So Exchange Mailbox Permissions gives you the ability to delegate access to a full mailbox or to finer, smaller folders inside of the mailboxes. And that allows you to give other people access so that they can do functions in your organization. Maybe they just need to read information or they need to contribute to a folder in your uh, mailbox. And um, you would use the exchange management shell to create those. Stay now um, with us for public folders.